Good afternoon, everyone. Before I start, I want to ask you, how many of you have experienced water shortage? Can you raise your hand? OK, so the reality, uh, the reality is that billions live in water stress areas. One in four lack access to safe water. Two in five access to sanitation. And those numbers are even increasing, how that is possible in 2024. Now, water connects every part of our lives and of our economies. So investing in a more sustainable management of water resources and ensuring universal access to reliable, safe water and sanitation, it's a no-brainer to know that that delivers pure impact to billions around the planet. And, but Still, uh, one of the reasons, and maybe we, don't, we, we often don't think, why, why is it that we have not closed that gap? Well, access to finance for those people to solve their own problem and for those infrastructure we need to deliver those services to be there is a main barrier. Sorry. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> um, um, uh, we, uh, and, and that's where we have come uh, to exist, because basically we're an asset manager exclusively focused on water and sanitation. We have spun out of a water, um, NGO called water.org. And since 2016, in our inception, we have been able to raise 436 million in investment capital, 5.3, uh, more than 5 uh, million people uh, with access to safe water and sanitation in 16 countries across Latin America, Asia, and Africa. And uh, um, I don't know why I'm so uh, nervous, but one moment. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think it was not working first, so I, I got a little off. Uh, and this is a topic really close to my heart. I'm the director of Climate Impact and basically trying to integrate water resources management into our investment decisions. But the, as much as we have achieved together with many partners around the world, the reality is that climate and their impacts in experience mainly through the water cycle are halting this progress and reversing some of the gains we have had. And that's why basically, if you know, we don't even need extreme events. Half of the world, four billion already experience one month a year water scarcity. And that's why uh, we had to rethink ourselves, right? We couldn't just be focused on access to water and sanitation. We had to go from household level solutions, that is what we have done for years, to resilient water supply systems. And for that reason is that we basically have had to expand also our impact framework uh, <laughs> to, uh, a, to, act, to also include uh, water scarcity, mitigation of water scarcity, and water quality. And that's what I'm presenting here to you today is our new Water and Climate Resilience Fund. Basically, uh, it's a 200 million private equity fund that is going to cover the same uh, continents we have already served in the past, uh, but we are going to be investing directly in project um, and growth companies across the entire value chain. The main motivation for these uh, investments are basically to ensure that low-income communities disproportionately affected by these extreme events are able to cope. And then we can hope they can thrive because if they cannot cope, there is no way they will thrive. And we are aiming to uh, in, yeah, um, impact 15 million uh, people in 10 years term. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. <laughs> This is a topic very dear to my heart. I'm an Algerian citizen, not only French, and um, those months of uh, water supply and water access have, um, have been all my life as, as a child and uh, in summer, and they're still the life of my family. So thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, just leaving you some time to breathe here. Okay. Yes. I, I must confess there was something in this life different and it just got That's me fine. off. That's <laughs> fine, we're here for you. Any questions from the audience? Yes, thank you. 
tục Hello. Okay. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the funders that you already have uh, on board? Uh, what sort of profile you have? And uh, uh, when we talk about exit, uh, what sort of timeline are we talking, uh, looking at as well? Okay. Thank you. Um, yes. I, I mean, uh, we already did the first close, uh, and uh, they're, they're dif different. Uh, it could be from family offices. Uh, but it also includes large uh, corporates because they have water risk. And I think one, one something that is, is, very, if is very good about our framework is that we're going to be reporting impacts at watershed scale of, of what we're doing there, right? So they, um, then uh, in terms of exit, I would have to defer you to uh, our colleagues. Uh, but it's a 10-year uh, term uh, fund. Thank you. Next question. Yes. Thank you, Monica. Could you tell us a little bit more about your climate resilience strategy in terms of investments, please? Thank you. Um, well, I think what, what has been unique, and I think before Olivier was saying it's difficult sometimes to introduce a new strategy, hmm. is that although we can just decide one investment at a time, we're trying to see the watersheds, the place where water takes place, right, and the water cycle takes place. What is the baseline? What is happening there? What is the context? And then we are able to say, how does this investment is not only climate resilient itself, but how it can impact the life, the, the vulnerability of those communities, the, the water provision system, and the watershed. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, if we don't save the water sources, we're not going to have water in our taps. Thank you so much. Thank you. Please. Thank you.